And today's Money Monday, paying down debt. It is something that we all want to do, but how should we go about doing it? We've got our resident money guy, Kyle Winkfield from Finley Alexander Wealth Management to show us how to do that. How are you? I'm doing well, but it's probably one of my favorite topics. You know, just nobody likes debt. Everybody's like, hurry up and get rid of it. Ball and chain kind of deal. So I'm, I love, let's just jump into it. Let's, let's well, it. I'm one of those people. I do not like debt. I don't have it. I like just on top of it. But it is a quandary, Kyle, because we always wonder, should we be saving more or paying off more? And there are those seasons where, you know what, debt just pops up. So how do we tackle it? Well, first thing I want to be very clear for the, for the viewers and uh, anybody who sees this is the difference between what a debt is, what debt is, and what a liability is, because they're not necessarily the same thing. So let's start with what a debt is. A debt is a future obligation on money you have yet to earn, okay? A future obligation on money you've yet to earn. A liability simply states that you use somebody else's money to secure what is considered an asset. If you sell that asset, it will typically not only pay off the liability against the asset, but leave you in the black or with, you know, with flush with some money, right? So for many folks, the quickest example of a liability is a mortgage or a real property, real estate. Because mm -hmm. if you, barring the fact that it may or may not be upside down, typically it's not. So if you sold the house, the house will sell more for more typically than what you owe on it. Because very few banks nowadays are going to loan you a hundred plus percent loan to value on the property. You got to put some money down. They'll loan you 70, 80, 85%, whatever the number is, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not a debt, but people treat it like a debt because they're like, I want to be debt-free in retirement. I don't want to have this mortgage. It's hanging over me. It's a big part of my cash flow every month. So I get it. There's just ways to think about going about this because we got to save for our future self as well. But you can also you can also ask this question. I don't want to bother people with questions, but better questions, better answers, better strategy. And here it is. You finance... Do you believe you finance everything you buy? Most people are like, no way, I pay cash. Well, let me tell you something. If you pay cash, you give up the ability for that cash to earn interest and grow for you because you trade the cash for whatever the material good is typically that is depreciating. Like you pay cash for a car, put the key in the ignition, car's worth less. Okay, mm -hmm. now, if you finance using someone else's money, like a bank or financial institution, you will pay interest for the privilege of using their money. My question is, what is the least impactful financing approach to take to making large purchases and managing your money? So asking that question. Got it. All right. So knowing that if we have a lot of debt, how do we know where to start then? First thing I would tell people to do, let's, I mean, this is old school, but it works. If it doesn't work, don't, don't stop. So here it is. Write down who are all the creditors? Who do you owe? Who do you owe? And what do you owe them for? Better figure out what. Who do I owe? What do I owe them for? How much do I owe them? What is the interest rate that, are, that I'm being charged? And then what do I pay them every month? Mm -hmm. And find that out. And the first eye-opening uh, exercise here is you add up how much you owe somebody and how much cash flow they're sucking out of you. And it's like, okay, I owe all creditors, not mortgage included here maybe 80 grand, and they're sucking 1,500 bucks a month for my cash flow. Woo! Wow, if we could figure out how to do a debt roll-up or snowball or elimination of the 80 grand, you just got back 1,500 bucks that you could put towards your future. Let me tell you something. We're so aggressive, Elsa, on paying off creditors. Yes. I suggest this. Keep that same energy and treat, treat yourself like a creditor and try to pay your future self off so you can have an amazing retirement. Try it that way. I, I like that approach. I think a lot of times it's that anxiety, right? You don't want to have to owe somebody else. But I remember asking you this about, you know, buying a condo and, and paying it all off. And you said it is a personal decision. If that gives you, you know, your peace of mind, okay. But there are tax implications and credits you can get if you spread. So it really does change from person to person. Um, there's a the smart thing to do but the heart and the mind, they sort of battle at times. So I'm Always. glad, that, yes, you are a financial planner that gets that. So if someone is watching right now and they're like, okay, I need you to actually tweak this plan so that it works for me and my family. How do they get in touch with you, Kyle? Go to finleyalexander.com. That's our digital home. That's our metaverse, whatever you want to call it. But go there. And what I would suggest is that you, you can go immediately to the financial resource page and look at different 
uh, guides and things that I've written about best ways to manage debt and get out of it quickly. But really, most people want to know what's going to work for me. So I would encourage you to, to jump on there and say, OK, click on see if we're a good fit. Grab some time. We'll have a conversation. Even if we don't work together. Hey, if I can do a debt roll up for you and help you get out of that and give you some, you know, a, a way to do this better and faster. That's what it's all about. I would say one steadfast rule, one steadfast rule. Cash flow and income is where all of the financial security and lifestyle comes from. Mm -hmm. So being mindful of managing your cash flow by controlling the kind of debt that you create so it doesn't spin out of, out of, out of control and being in control of your capital. So manage your cash flow and control your capital and you can go as far as you want to go. But the idea is if you don't get that, because remember, there is no retirement without income and there is no lifestyle security without an increasing income stream. That's it. Now, let's do it. So that's the point. <laughs> All right. Kyle Wingfield, of course, we'll reach out to you to help make that happen. We appreciate it. And we'll be right back with more Midday Maryland right after this. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. 